The night before my brother's arrest, I went on my first date with my girlfriend. I remember telling her of each of my brothers, and specifically telling her that one day my youngest sibling, Edong, would get arrested. To my surprise, at that very moment, he was being interrogated. Edong's house was raided, his assets were frozen, and he was charged with possession of drug paraphernalia and intent to sell marijuana. It was my eldest brother, Ben, who called to give me the awful news one Tuesday morning this past May. Freaking out, he told me the bail was set to $100,000. We needed to find $10,000 to bail him out. Like many times past, I moved into my role of damage controller and realist. <laughs> we are not bailing him out, I said. He picked his friends, let him remain in there. What we can do is get him a lawyer. Baby sis. He's our brother. We have to help him. If not us, then who? I mean, I know he made his bed and should lie in it and all, but we gotta do something, right? Ben, we don't have to do a damn thing. When he stole $2,500 from his employer, we came to his rescue. When he wrecked the car while under the influence, we were there. And when he got that DUI his first semester in college, we helped him turn that shit around. The boy is not learning anything by us always bailing him out, so no, we do not need to do anything to help him out, except find a good lawyer. With luck, he'll get out on good behavior. After 30 minutes of discussing the matter, I finally had Ben thinking more realistically. Ben and I were able to secure a lawyer through our own connections. <laughs> Baby sis. The lawyer needs half up front before he will go to the jail and see Edom and determine what the charges are against him. Ben's tone hung between a question and a statement. When problems arise in my family, everyone turns to me. I am much more level-headed, putting emotion to the side while striving to find what is the most logical solution. In the same way that my family turns to me for advice, they also seek my help when money is concerned. When my younger brother needed a co-signer for his loans, since my parents' credit was shot, he asked me. When my grandmother passed away and my parents needed money to go to Nigeria for the funeral, I stepped up. On the heels of my brother's arrest, Ben's question statement suggested someone needed to take action. The day before Edong's arrest, my mom had co-signed on a loan with Edong so that he could buy a new car. So she was out. My dad was retired. My younger brother quit his job a month prior, and Ben was in between jobs. Not to mention, Edong's assets were frozen. Though I was nowhere close to being out of the red financially after my move to California a year ago, I said I would take out the $10,000 loan for the lawyer. I wanted to do anything to make my parents happy. In my mind, I thought my parents would see how awesome it is to have a daughter who may have been gay, but was no criminal. I thought their happiness for the money I was able to supply for my brother's defense would forgive my sexuality. I thought my parents would stop seeing me as a sinner because of whom I loved, and more like a person who put family above all else. With the swivel of a pen, I had a loan from my bank for the $10,000 needed to get eat on a criminal defense lawyer. Hours later, my family had the affidavit in hand detailing how long the DEA had been watching Edong, who else had been arrested in the raid, and what Edong said when he was interrogated. In reading the affidavit, it seemed like the DEA had nothing on him until I turned to the last page. There, in one sentence, Edong stated, I am a dealer, and the other person you arrested is my supplier. <laughs> I could not believe what I was reading. All I could think was, how many Law and Order episodes has my brother watched? <laughs> Always striving to do the exact opposite of my parents, I have freely told all those close to me about everything that makes me who I am, from my sexuality to my brothers and my parents. My parents, however, just like my sexuality, kept what was going on with Edong behind closed doors, refusing to tell anyone in the Nigerian community for fear of being judged. 
even though everyone knew about Edom because of the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> Two weeks later, my parents began to go mad over the absence of my brother, and they decided, against my wishes, to put a lien on their home to get a bail bond for him. Edom called me the day after he was bailed out. I informed him of the $10,000 plus interest he owed me, that our parents' house would be taken if he ran, and berated him over the lack of common sense he must have if he can so easily crack under pressure incriminating himself. <laughs> In the background, I heard my mom ask Edom what he wanted for dinner. <laughs> Apparently, Edom was not in the mood for any of the food in the fridge. So she was going to run to the store and buy him whatever he wanted. <laughs> my dad could also be heard asking Edom if he needed the car to go anywhere. As Edom cried over the phone apologizing for his stupidity while addressing my mom and dad's questions, I thought back to this past Christmas. Since coming out to my parents over a year ago, they have refused to talk about my sexuality. At Christmas, my mom broke the ice, stating to everyone in my family that she would not be participating unless I retracted being gay. <laughs> I hated that my mom felt the need to strong arm me into being who she wanted, but allowed Edom, a potential criminal, to walk around her home like everything was normal. Pissed off about this, I called my mom a few weeks later about the matter. You keep saying you are okay. When I talked to you, when I told you I was gay, you said you're okay. When Edom went to jail last month, you said you were okay. Still today, you are saying you're okay. But when I listen to you talk, I know you are not okay. I'm depressed. And you started when you told me you are gay. Your brother has only added to my depression, my mom finally said, after 45 minutes of prodding at her over the phone. I have been praying that you would reverse what you have told me, but it seems as if you are living that lifestyle in California, she continued. Hmm. Wait, Mom, are you saying you are more upset about my sexuality than my brother going to jail, I demanded. My mom, who never talks about her feelings, was finally addressing a lot of stuff I had forced her to face. Yes. You are the cause of my depression, people. How can you do this to me? Had I known when you first realized you were gay, perhaps I may be over it by now. I keep thinking of all your friends you have asked me to buy gifts for when they get married. When will my turn come? I thought this was tit for tat. Angered by her words, I lunged into her about the comparison of my sexuality to that of a criminal, how my sexuality was not one that could simply be turned off or on, how I too wanted to get married and have a family, and how all this would happen, save the fact it would be with a woman, my desire to be a part of her life, my desire for her to be a part of my life on my wedding day, my love for her, but how my happiness trumped her pain, and how her fear of getting to know me as who I was was only pushing me further away. Feeling. I don't know why you're getting so upset. You need to calm down. <laughs> when my mom has pushed me to the limit, she acts as if she has no earthly idea why I could possibly be angry. It is as if she's not there when she spews hateful words from her mouth. She went on to say how much it hurt, that her and I were not close, her only daughter in a house filled with men was no ally to her. She was having a hard time grasping why I was so scared of telling her what was going on in my life. Mom, are you kidding me? You just compared me to a drug dealer. You say you want to know me, that you have no idea how I became who I am, but you're living a life of this as if I'm still in high school, as if I'm still the high schooler that you sent off to college 10 years ago. I've been waiting for you to have a conversation with me. I've been waiting for you to ask me all sorts of questions, and you won't. And when I try and have a conversation with you, you question why I am asking you questions. You call and you want to talk about the weather in San Diego. Each time I tell you, it's sunny. When are we going to have a real conversation? Mom, I still have no idea how you and Dad met. Are you happy in your marriage? Did you want to have four kids? What was life like before you had us? I said, knowing my mom, who once told me secrets are meant to protect the family, would not address any of my questions. Philo, as I said, you need to calm down. Aren't you driving? You can't be driving with such anger at the wheel. My mom acted as if I did not just ask her 21 questions. So I tried another tactic. 
okay, mom, you want to know more about me? Well, I'm dating someone. Her name is Kim, and she makes me really happy. She treats me like a princess, and I think you would really like her if you ever wanted to meet her. Mom, I am happy. This is the happiest I've been in a long time. My mom grew silent once she heard that. She was thinking of what she was going to say, and I was busy placing bricks back up on the wall I had just let down. Philo, I am so happy that you are happy. Okay. <laughs> Mom, are you saying what you think I want to hear, or do you really mean what you just said? <laughs> yes, Philo, I meant every word. As your mother, that is all I want, is for you to be happy. My mom said this with a type of empathy I had never heard before. Tears came to my eyes, and my throat began to clench shut. All I could say was, thank you, Mom. That means a lot to me. In that moment, I felt my mom was finally starting to see me as a person. The state has 14 witnesses against Elon. His trial is set for next month. There's no guarantee Edong will be a free man after his trial. But my parents are more than happy to harbor him in their home. Since opening the door for my mom to have meaningful conversations with me, she has yet to walk through it. Recently, my brothers decided to add her to our text message group so she can stay up to date on what is going on in our lives. So when Kim and I took our first vacation together over the 4th of July to the Bay Area, I sent the group a picture. My brothers all commented about how flashy we looked together and were happy I spent the holiday doing something fun with Kim. My mom responded with silence. 